everybody. My name is Marsha Hampton. I'm the Community and Downtown Services Director with the City of Douglasville, for those who may or may not know me. Um, this is the second time that we've held this event here at this location at this time. Um, it was a change that we made with our Historic Preservation Commission and some of those members who are here today, some who have previously served, um, in order to try to change up the event. For years, many of you remember that we uh, held a luncheon in conjunction with the city's, his, with the county's History and Tourism Commission. Um, but our thought was is that we wanted to possibly combine this with tourism. Our local historic district is actually a, a tourism destination for many people who visit Douglasville, so we felt like what a better opportunity to marry these two programs together and to show you just how important both tourism and historic preservation is for us. Um, it's a, a economic development tool that we use in the department and the staff, both tourism and historic preservation, to one, attract people here as well as to preserve those things that we feel as though that are very important uh, to the city in preserving our history. Uh, so with that being said, Randy's going to kind of kick things off with our award program. We work with various volunteers through our CBB advisory board. Randy is our sales manager with our Convention and Visitors Bureau, and she's going to present some awards to us tonight for those who uh, have helped us throughout the year in tourism. Um, as many of you know or may not know, last week was National Tourism Week, and we celebrated that by doing a couple different things. We did the um, Welcome to Douglasville kind of promotion. Anybody who came in the Welcome Center got either a t-shirt or a game or anything that we had labeled Douglasville um, as a souvenir, also as a way to kind of promote awareness of the Welcome Center. Um, we also did a hospitality luncheon um, one day last week to kind of give a thank you to all of our hospitality partners, our hotels, our CVB advisory board. And we also do the awards every year now. Um, and I'll get it started off, we have a Spirit Award and also a Hospitality Worker of the Year Award. And our first award is the Spirit Award. Um, this year we had two recipients just because we couldn't decide. Um, they were both wonderful. Both of them were on or have been on the CVB Advisory Board for over a year now. And they both go above and beyond and are so positive, always giving um, suggestions on what we can do to better market Douglasville to the community and also outside the community. And um, I'm very honored to give this award to Sarah Ray with the Chamber of Commerce. Our other um, recipient was Tim Collins, and he was unable to be here today, but he is with the um, Chapel Hill News and Bees. But thank you, Sarah, thank for you. all your hard work. Yeah. Our second award is the Hospitality Worker of the Year Award, and this award is actually voted on by the hoteliers and the CVB Advisory Board. Um, and this person actually exemplifies everything that we could ask for in a board member. Um, she goes above and beyond. She will call with suggestions. Um, she is there to volunteer anytime we have an event or something coming up that there is to volunteer for. And I am proud to give this award to Patty Wank. <laughs> Thanks, Patty and Sarah. Good evening. My name is Pat Smith. I'm chair of the Historic Preservation Commission here in Douglasville. I'm proud to also serve with Josh Gibson here on the front row and Joyce Ainsworth, a couple other members of the commission. We give each year a maintenance award for maintaining your historic building. <laughs> And we also award the Donald Bennett Award, which is overall historic preservation. The first one I want to talk about is the maintenance award. 8440 Courthouse Square East was built around 1870 by John Penn Watson and later sold to A.L. Bartlett, who was judge of superior courts in the Tallapoosa Judicial Circuit. Judge Bartlett was related by marriage to the Watson family in Paulding and Douglas counties. Over the years, the building has been home to a tavern, dry goods store, restaurant, dime store, auto parts counter, to name a few. In the early 1990s, Robert Edwards, Jr. opened a law firm on the ground floor. And in 1996, Mr. Edwards retired and the building was sold to Dick and Teresa Donovan. 
and Dick opened his law firm on the, on the ground floor. He was joined in 2000 by Robert Chambers and they formed Donovan Chambers PC Attorneys at Law. Dick was later elected and served as District Attorney of the Paulding Judicial Circuit, a successor to the Tallapoosa Judicial Circuit. Dick and Teresa were unaware of the ownership of the building until after the sale was closed. While she was reviewing the deeds in the lobby display, Teresa realized that the building had once belonged to her aunt, Ruth Hudgens, daughter of her father's great-great-uncle, A.L. Bartlett. Teresa's father is Wendell Bartlett Walton, Walton Sr., whose grandmother, Martha Watson, Watson, was related by marriage to Judge Bartlett and by blood to John Penn Watson, original owner and builder of what is now known as 8440 Courthouse Square East. The Historic Preservation is proud to present the award for maintenance to Dick and Teresa Donovan. The Donald Bennett Award is given each year to a person who has a strong commitment and dedication to historic preservation, and in particular to the historic district of Douglasville. I've known Renee Kell for probably over 10 years. Um, we both live in the historic district of downtown Douglasville, and we are both very passionate about historic preservation. Renee is so passionate about it that she has bought and lived in two homes here in the historic district. I knew from those two projects that Renee had a, a passion for historic preservation and through a mutual friend she was encouraged to join the Historic Preservation Commission where she immediately took off, had that same enthusiasm uh, towards, towards the process, towards the guidelines, towards helping uh, applicants that came before us. She always wanted to do the best for both uh, the applicant and for the, the neighborhood that we were involved in. She is a very, very hard worker. I've worked with Renee on the Promotions Committee, uh, which is part of the Downtown Development Authority. She will do anything that needs to be done. She will work long hours, um, whatever we need to promote downtown Douglasville. Uh, the reason we've chosen to uh, recognize Renee with the Donald Bennett Award is for her contributions to the community, uh, both from a historic perspective and just an overall community involvement. Now she is a um, is treasurer, she's a board member on the Cultural Arts Center here in Douglasville and working as a Taste of Douglasville co-chair. There, there's people that serve and do a wonderful job for the for the city, the county, the, the local community, but then there there's very few people that do what Renee does, which is become really super personal and passionate about the items that she's addressing. Renee is uh, one of those people that you feel like you can just go and sit on her porch and have a glass of tea with her and um, you know spend before you know it an hour or two with her. She was always asking for one more thing. Well can we do this? Can we do this? How can we do this? How can we make this process better? How can we make this easier for the applicants? How can we, how can we make this a more streamlined process that benefits everybody better than just following the rules, you know, ABC. So she's, as I mentioned, more than just the historic preservation involvement, really an overall uh, commitment to our community and, and making things better. And I'm very happy that she is being awarded the Donald Bennett Award this year at, for historic preservation. Renee Kim. said I had to. So. Had to. <laughs> um, since this award has been created, well, since the historic preservation started in 2008, I have presented all but one, the very first award, to all the recipients. And in all that time, I never thought I'd find myself on this side of it. Um, I'm very honored to be receiving this award and to be considered a part of a, a group of people that just every day just give so much energy and so much of themselves to preserve the historic the historic 
integrity of our city. But I'm very honored. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Josh Gibson. You may recognize me from such films as the one you just saw. <laughs> so I, um, I moved to Douglasville in 2004. Uh, my wife and I had purchased a home from her grandfather. We fully renovated and restored the home. And it was really that, that process with extended family and friends that gave me the passion for historic architecture and the process. So a couple years later, I had a, a neighbor and friend encourage me to join the Historic Preservation Commission where I've been serving for just over four years now. So uh, something that really seems to me uh, the past few years to become uh, more and more involved is, is the support and involvement from the mayor and the council members. And so in, in past years, if you've attended this event, we've uh, seen videos with former Mayor Thompson as he strolled through the streets of the historic district with residents learning about historic preservation in the community. So this year, I'm proud to present our video where we will first uh, visit with Mayor Persons as he sits down with Suzanne Hudson to, to talk about some historical landmarks and then her home on Campbellton Street and her beautiful gardens that are uh, critically acclaimed, nationally featured gardens. And from there, uh, Mayor Persons sits down with Dot Paget to talk about how the neighborhood has changed over the years, uh, the home that she grew up in, why historic preservation is important to all of us. So again, thank you for being here tonight and, and please enjoy the video. Good morning. We're here today to celebrate historic preservation during the month of May. And we're here at the historic home of Miss Suzanne Hudson, which is the Hutchison home. And please join me now as we go through a stroll through her gardens and get her to talk with us about her beautiful home today. Joining me now is Miss Suzanne Hudson in her downtown beautiful garden that we have here, right here in the middle of downtown Douglasville. Miss Hudson is one of our premier decorators in the county, if, if not really nationally, and is one of the co-founders of the Hydrangea Festival, which has been very successful. And I'm gonna ask Miss Hudson if she'd just touch briefly on it in a minute and talk about how successful it's been in some of the national recognition. But we're here today to talk about the historic preservation of the Hutchison home. And I would like for you to talk a little bit about it, give us some of the history of it, and tell us what brought you here, if you would, please. Okay. Well, I'm glad you came this morning. It's a beautiful morning. And you know I could talk forever on the Hydrangea <laughs> Festival, but we have uh, won many state and national awards for that festival and right. the flower show. So. If you haven't seen the flower show, please attend that flower show because when Douglasville receives state and national recognition, it's a very special thing. Wouldn't miss it. Good. Well, my home was built, uh, part of it, in 1875. Right. And the Hutchison family purchased this home in 1900, and they lived here for 100 years. So it has seen a lot of changes in that 100 A lot of history. Yeah, a lot of history. Uh, Mr. Hutchison was a mayor. Of the town, okay. And um, they, in 1915, they added on to the home. The front of the home is new, 1915. Okay. At the same time, they built the building in downtown that Gumbo's is in right now, and it is the Hutchison Building. It's up on the top, and um, it was housed the post office and then his law office on the upstairs. Okay. But when I bought this house, I always wanted to live in an old home. So I did not want to make it new in any way. So I left all the original things in the home, including the wallpaper from 1915. But uh, mechanically, it is a new house. All you, the heating and air. and You updated all the mechanical stuff and the functional things right, that you need the for a day-to-day -day basis. The cosmetics is still 1915. But then I thought after I did the home, I should work on the gardens in the same way. So I have a living room and a dining room and a foyer and a breakfast room, all outside, just like I do on the inside. All right here where we're standing today. Yeah. And I might add, you have done a beautiful job with it. 
Well, Miss Hudson, I want to thank you for allowing us to come today to talk to you about your beautiful garden that I believe has been featured in Southern Living. Yeah. And that's quite an accomplishment, and we're glad to hear that and congratulate you on that. But now we're going to leave and go to one of your neighbors, uh, Miss Dot Paget, and see her home on Price Avenue and see what she's done to preserve the historic value of her home. So I want to really thank you today for what you've done. And at some point in time, I want to come back and get a, a tour on the inside, if I may. I'd love to have you. Great. Thank you very much, and you have a great day. Please join me as we continue our downtown mayor's stroll in beautiful downtown Douglasville as we go up to meet truly a Southern Belle, Miss Dot Paget, and enjoy a glass of iced tea. Good morning, how are you today? Here we are on the front porch of Miss Dot Paget's beautiful home on Price Street in downtown historic Doug Douglasville. And Miss Dot has off, uh, brought us in for a visit today and offered us some good old Southern iced tea from a true Southern <laughs> Belle. And actually, our citizen of the year. So we're happy to have you as part of our community. You grew up in Douglasville. And I'd like for you, if you would, to share a little bit with us about your beautiful home here that is historically preserved, as well as the home that you grew up in on Bowden Street. So if you'd share a little bit of that with us as we have our glass of tea, mm -hmm. I would appreciate it. Well, thank you, first of all, for having an interest in the historic preservation. Uh, I think it's very important, and thank you and the members of the general uh, the um, council for doing that. This house uh, was the original cottage in 1875, and it was Robert Massey who was appointed postmaster uh, for, by Grover Cleveland, President Cleveland. So he brought his young bride here. He put her to work in the post office and then brought his young bride here to this little two, three-room cottage. And what you can see, though, was uh, built in uh, 1902. And I recently found some boards in the back doing some remodeling that had the square nails in them. Oh. And uh, that is an excellent way to tell the, uh, how old a house is by the construction, by the wood, and, uh, and certainly by the square nails. So that was, uh, it was like getting a Christmas present uh, for me. But when you mention the house on Bowden Street, that house is a, has a uh, significance also, other than the fact that I guess I live there and used to climb in the front window when I was late coming in from a date. Now that wasn't too long ago, right? <laughs> but. Anyway, well, if memory serves me well, that was a long time ago. But what is important about that house, and you know, everything is timely. It has, the past comes right up to the present. And um, Herschel Upshaw moved into that house very soon after it was built. And the Upshaw building is the building downtown Douglasville that's being renovated right now. And so everything connects, what we have down here connects with um, the commercial part up town. And another thing that's timely is the presidential elections that are going on now and the campaign. And there was a man there that lived there named William D. Upshaw, and he was a congressman. Then he ran on the prohibition ticket in 1932 against, uh, he was on the prohibition ticket. He was nominated by that ticket, and he actually ran for the presidency against Franklin Roosevelt. He won Douglas County. He didn't win the election. But Mr. Upshaw, that gives some significance to a house that would uh, make a house a candidate for the National Register for Historic Homes. So I'm hoping that we can get some houses um, put on that register. We have to be very careful with making changes, though. <coughs> when you modify a house, you take away the character. And so you, that's why the Preservation Commission is so important. Um, the um, story about coming in late at night. I don't know if you've heard that before, but... Share that with us. <laughs> if, if, if you can on camera. I can. Well, you know, back then we didn't keep doors and windows locked, but our front door in that house has a little bell, 
and the door needed some work done on it. So anytime you opened that front door, it made a lot of noise, and I had a curfew, and so I would just slip, raise up the window in my bedroom, which was on the front porch, <laughs> and slip in the window. No, not you, Miss Dot. And then um, put on my pajamas and go back sort of where my mom and dad were. We didn't hear you come in. <laughs> oh, I've been here a long time. <laughs> so that was that was also the uh, one of the stories. Because the best story about Mr. Upshaw is the uh, Mr. William D. Upshaw would go around to the high schools with his little, uh, he had a little bowl, he'd pour a beer in it. And then he'd pour a little jar of worms in it, and the worms would all curl up and die. And he would say to the students, I don't know why he'd do this, we'd do it to him every year, but he'd say to the students, now students, if you drink beer, you see what will happen to you, and we'd all yell out, you'll never have worms. <laughs> Oh, let, let me share a quick little story with our viewers, if I may, about historic preservation and Miss Dot's contribution. Uh, I was able to be on the city council back, oh gosh, 23 years ago at one time. And when I was first elected, got a phone call from Miss Dot, and she said, I want to know what you know about the historic preservation of downtown Douglasville. And I didn't know where she was going, but I said, well, I, you know, share a little bit. She said, well, I got a better idea. How about if I pick you up one day and just take you on a tour? So she picked me up one day and gave me a, a, a tour of downtown historic Douglasville and gave me the history of a lot of not only the buildings in downtown, mm -hmm. but a lot of these beautiful homes that you see here that have been historically preserved. So Ms. Dot has been a valuable contributor to the historic preservation of our community. And just as a side note, so that our viewers know the importance of historic preservation as a tourism aspect, we have done some research and found that historic preservation tourism as an industry in 2010 was over a six billion dollar industry I know. in Georgia. Not only that, but the studies have shown that with historic historically preserved homes, the foreclosure rate is much lower. So it helps stabilize in a community, adds historic value to it, and we want to thank you for today. We want to thank you for your gracious hospitality as always. Thank you for the IST and thank you for being Miss Dot and what you do for our uh, community. Thank you so much. I want to add one thing. Okay. That is with your conference center here when you're marketing for the uh, people who that you want to come. Uh, I've been to a lot of, been in the convention and meeting business for a long time. These people in these meetings need a break sometime. The perfect place for them to do is take a stroll down through these three or four downtown streets in the neighborhoods that have been preserved and take a stroll and that gives them a, <clears throat> a break. And that is, that is very important when you're marketing uh, uh, food and entertainment. And of course, history is a byproduct of, of the entertainment. Right. So you're quite welcome, and thank you for coming. And thank you for what you do for our community. And oh, we appreciate you very much. Well, oh boy, that's nice to be appreciated. Well, thank you. In case you don't know me or recognize me, you may know me from some of my uh, movie credits, <laughs> or you've been up too late at night watching reruns of city TV. So, but I uh, want to thank everybody for being here today. I uh, thank city TV for the job that they do. Thank staff for the job that they continue to do. And as always, I've got a, they give, they give me a few prepared remarks. And they hope that I'm going to stick to them. But they've learned a little bit. When I get up here and get a hold of the podium and get a microphone, and I can see Bill just going, oh, here we go again. And Marsha, bless her heart, she just, she winces. And then my wife sits over there, and she does this. <laughs> I don't know what she's doing, but, you know, I teach Sunday school. She, I, I'm, she's right there on the front row going. But... <laughs> I say that, but historic preservation is really very serious. And I do have a couple of prepared things that they've given me. 
And uh, but then I'm then y'all be disappointed if I didn't get off script just a teeny bit. But each year, National Preservation Month is celebrated by many people during the month of May, which is what we're doing here. And the National Trust for Historic Preservation leads these efforts in the recognition of this month. Uh, they collaborate with local, state, and federal organizations to help spread the word of the importance of historic preservation. And I had the opportunity to speak to a group this morning, and uh, it kind of blows my intro with this because you've already seen it on the uh, film clip there. But I opened with them and went, what's the big deal? I mean, it's just historic preservation. Yeah, what's the big deal? It's just a bunch of folks. And uh, Randy's back there. She's smiling now, but she wasn't smiling this morning when I started with this, I can assure you. She's over there just gripped up. But I said, you know, really, what's the big deal? It's just a bunch of people getting together to preserve a bunch of old things. And I stopped, and I thought Randy was just going to, I mean, she was starting to swoon, you know. But I'm going to say it again. What's the big deal? It's just a bunch of people getting together to preserve a bunch of old stuff. And then there was a lady, you know, everybody, you know, uh, was sitting there, and, you know, there was one lady that raised her hand, and she goes, I'm a teacher, and, you know, uh, and she was talking about preserving history, and again, I said, what's the big deal? But it is a big deal. It's a very big deal. It's a big deal for two things. It's a big deal in that we have an obligation and responsibility to preserve our history and pass it on to those people and those young people that are coming after us. And, you know, I got to say I was guilty when I was young and growing up. What did history matter? You know, I studied a little bit of it. But now I've learned it's very important. There's a lot to learn from those people that came before us. And you, you saw on the clip there where Miss Dot, like I said, I was on the council 20 some odd years ago. She called me up one day, wanted to know what I was doing, and I thought, I'm mm, not sure where this is going. And uh, I said, why? She said, what do you know about historic Douglasville? And I said, well, you know, I, a little bit, but no. Well, we set up a date, and she came by and loaded me up, and I proceeded to find out about <coughs> historic Douglasville and what it has to offer. And since then, uh, I don't know how many of you have run the streets of downtown Douglasville, but I do, and I do it frequently. And I can't tell you how many miles over the years I've logged running these streets or walking. But not only these streets, but I've been through the cemeteries. I've walked the cemeteries. And I've looked at the names on those tombstones, and I've matched them with the street signs and have learned a lot about the historic value that Douglasville and Douglas County has. And we have an obligation and a responsibility to preserve that. Why? Because that's our history. That's who we are. And we have a responsibility and obligation to pass that on and preserve it for history from now on. Because there was a point in time when some people came through here and thought, you know, this would great, be a great place to build a town and build a community. And they did that. And now here we are. And we have, we, we've been entrusted with it now. I got a little saying, it's, uh, and I wish I could have coined this. Uh, I didn't, but a friend of mine did. And he said, you know, our friends are too young. I mean, our kids are too young. Our parents are too old. He said, you know what? It's our turn. And we started talking that 25, 30 years ago when we were here in Douglasville. Well, y'all have the benefit of being a lot younger than I am. But I can't keep saying that a whole lot longer because there's a lot of them that are coming along that it's becoming their turn. And we have a responsibility and obligation to pass along our history and what we were given and what we've inherited because it's who we are. It's who this community is and it needs to be preserved for that value. And it's up to us. And I commend each and every one of you for being a part of that and contributing to it because 
then that will take us to that next step. So let me go on. And, and uh, the city of Douglasville recognizes Preservation Month by bringing awareness to the, our historical assets that contribute to the community. You know, in the meeting this morning, one of the things that was going to be done was talking about our assets and what do we have to offer. And they heard me say, and I said, you know, I hear beautiful downtown historic Roswell. And I don't know how many of you have seen, they've got a little picture and it's a little waterfall. Now, I don't know where it is, but I've never seen it in Roswell. But downtown Douglasville and Douglas County, we have assets that rival anywhere in the country. And if you don't believe it, go down Dog River sometimes. And I've talked to how many in here know where Flyblow is? You been, you, have you been there? Will it rival anything in North Georgia? And then if you hadn't seen it, there's certain areas on Dog River that you can get, th get to if you really try real hard that will rival any rapids and shoals and view and scenery anywhere in North Georgia. And you say, how do you know that? Because I've been there. I've sat on those cliffs. Cliffs, Dog River? Yeah, I've sat on them and had a picnic and sat there and thought, wow, you know? And we got people driving a couple of hundred miles to North Georgia to watch the foliage and the rapids and, or historic preservation. And I've lived here 35 years. Like I said, I've run the streets in tennis shoes or in running shoes. But before my wife starts doing this, I get carried away about this. But I've lived here for 35 years. And 14 years ago, I could have moved anywhere in the country. And I could have moved anywhere in the Atlanta metropolitan area to do what I did to make a living. Did I? No. I chose to stay in Douglasville. And I live in downtown Douglasville. I retired three years ago, fortunately, and could have moved anywhere in the country. But I choose to stay in downtown Douglasville and Douglas County. Why? Because of what we have and what we have to offer, the sense of community, the historic value, and all the things that we have to offer. But we all have an obligation and responsibility to preserve it and pass it on to future generations. And that's what you're here for. That's what you do. And I commend each and every one of you for it. Our local historic district is an example of one of the most treasured historic assets we have. The mayor, that guy, the bald-headed guy y'all saw rolling down the street. Historic stroll video depicts two of our charming, I might add, local residents that continue to help preserve our city and our local historic district. The video also shows the strong link between our historic, commercial, and residential district. By researching the history of the homes and the commercial buildings, you, you discover the history of Douglasville and Douglas County. I want to thank Ms. Uh, Hudson and Ms. Paget. And now, Will, I, I do have to share something with you. We did have, to, our city TV folks did have to edit some of that story about the uh, sneaking in in the middle of the night, but they, they edited that and cleaned it up for uh, public viewing. For a small fee, you might can get the unedited version. But no, I want to thank uh, Ms. Hudson and Ms. Paget for being the champions uh, for historic preservation in our community that they are, and their homes of, are evidence of their dedication to this effort, as well as the efforts that everybody here puts towards historic preservation. Because you see, it's not the efforts of one or two or three or four that make that difference. It's that collective effort of a community pulling together to preserve the historic values of its community and then passing that on to future generations. And that's what we're doing. Also, I want to congratulate our award winners, Ms. Renee Kell, Don and Teresa Donovan, who had to run because they had another engagement they had to get to, for all that you're doing to help us preserve the historic history of Douglasville. And without the passion and commitment of citizens like you, 
the preservation in our community would not exist. It takes a lot of people working together. It takes the efforts of our city manager who's done a fine job for the last 20, 22, 23 years. Uh, Randy, Marsha, uh, I like to brag on them. They do a great job. Uh, Marsha, you can go ahead and start blushing. Uh, there's only one of nine like her in the state that has the certifications and the credentials that she has. We're very fortunate to have Randy. We're very fortunate to have a tremendous staff that we have that not only do you believe in the historic preservation and the quality of Douglasville, but they also. Stephanie Allworth also works with these ladies. You want to guess what she did her master's thesis, master's thesis on? Anybody know? Downtown Douglasville. She thought enough of it to do her master's thesis on it. We have some very talented people that are working with the city of Douglasville to help support your efforts and what you do and what you believe in and the passion that you have. Um, this Cultural Arts Center, the lady that runs it, does a fine job with it. And she got all kind of money to spend and uh, <laughs> has an unlimited budget. But, <laughs> I, thought, I thought we already had. But we have some very talented people and some very committed local residents that are working very hard to make Douglasville. Now, now brace yourselves to make Douglasville and Douglas County a destination point. And sometimes you say that and I can see people's eyes glaze over. Douglasville, a destination point? Why not? Why not? What can keep it from happening? Us? What can make it happen? We can, if we believe it and work to make it happen. Because we've got the treasures, we've got all of it to offer. We have Janet Kelly with us, Chairman of the Board of Education, working to see that the students get a good education and we help pass this on to them. First full week of May is annually recognized as the National Travel and Tourism Week and in Georgia tourism, listen to this now, tourism is the second largest industry in the state. Like preservation, tourism is a strong economic tool. And fortunately, our CBB staff, along with the Convention and Visitors Bureau Advisory Board, people that volunteer their efforts. Josh, how much you get paid for being on the advisory board? You just got to raise. <laughs> Ms. Ainsworth, like I said, a lot of great people here volunteering their efforts and their talents and their abilities to make this happen. We're going to make Douglasville a destination point, and our staff could not continue to build our tourism program without your support and the support of the many volunteers that work every day to make it a reality. With the dedication of individuals like Sarah Ray. Sarah's still here. She, she, had, she had to leave. She got tired of listening to me talk. Patty Wink, Tim Collins, our, our local tourism program and the efforts to continue to make Douglasville a great place not only to visit, but to live, work, play, and raise a family. Congratulations to our winners. Your recognition is well deserved. And both the preservation and tourism are great economic tools that we use every day to help make Douglasville that premier place in America to live, work, play, raise a family. And some of the facts that I mentioned on that little video clip that you saw, we have that report. And if you'd like to see it, we'd be glad to provide it to you. But those are not facts that we made up. But let me tell you one other quick thing, and I'm going to close. And when I mentioned about a Kia plant or a Caterpillar plant, those are great things. 
But would you guess what 100% of all net job growth in America since 2011? You want to guess what size firms that consisted of? Anybody want to take a wild guess? Firms employing fewer than 50 people. 100% of the net job growth now. On a cumulative basis, companies bigger than 50 employees have not added a single job in the last decade. 87% of all businesses in Georgia employ fewer than 20 people. Historic preservation is a $6.1 billion a year business. Not only is it about preserving the old and passing it along, but it's about job growth, economic development. 2010, over $6 billion were spent in Georgia on historic preservation. That's quite an industry. Second largest industry in Georgia. Some people talk about Kia. Some people talk about Caterpillar. What do we have to talk about? We have Douglasville, Douglas County, our community, and what we have to offer. And we can make it a destination point. Again, and in closing, I want to thank each one of you for being here. I want to thank City TV as usual. They still hadn't figured out how to get the glare off my head. But I appreciate you. And in closing, before we leave, we have uh, two city council members here, I believe. We have Councilman Sam Davis, and we have Councilman Carl Pope here. Glad to have you. And I can tell you that your mayor and your council are committed to your efforts and what you're doing to preserve the historic value of beautiful downtown Douglasville and Douglas County. But without you, it wouldn't be possible. Thank you for your efforts and uh, have a great evening. Thank you.